Okay, a quick little note before we begin. Uh, I just noticed after having listened to this video before editing it, well, I didn't really have to do that much editing, I just had to do a couple little things, but I thought I'd talk about this anyway. If it sounds like I don't feel fully well or I'm not like 100% myself, um, I, I wasn't really. I mean, I'm totally fine, there's nothing wrong with me or anything, it's just... I don't know, I just really wanted to get it out, so if I feel like disorganized and I talk weird or anything, then um, it's just something that kind of happened in the moment. Uh, but uh, with that out of the way, I hope you're going to enjoy. So, let's begin for real. Hello everyone, this is Nudge, and it's been quite a while since I've done an electronic game recording that is just me talking about one specific game. At least, I think it's been quite a while. I don't actually remember, to be quite honest, uh, when was the last time I've done this. Um, but I thought I might as well do it today because I just have pretty much exactly enough free time to accomplish it. And, uh, and there's a couple of other reasons why I want to uh, put this out there. Uh, which I'll eventually get to near the end. But anyway, so today I am going to be talking about a game that was recently released by Buffalo, I believe, uh, in collaboration with Dan, because Dan is amazing. And uh, the game, well, if I say Buffalo, there's literally only, like, really one answer. Um... The game in question is... Pop It Go. So, a little bit of a recap. For those who don't know, Pop It is a ridiculously popular thing, or at least I believe it used to be in the past few years, ever since this whole fidget thing started becoming a, a popular thing. There were like fidget spinners, fidget cubes, and then somewhere around there in that huge fray, Pop It came along, or maybe it was already a thing. Uh, for those who don't know what it is, Pop It is basically this grid of these silicone rubber things that you pop down, and then if you pop them from the other side, they will pop back up. It's ridiculously simple, but it's really fun to mess with. I used to have one of those a long time ago. I don't know where it is anymore, but I used to have one. And now I have one in electronic game form. Uh, basically, in 2022, I believe it was, uh, Dan partnered up with Buffalo to make Pop It Pro, which is the first electronic game version. Pop It Pro had 10 lights. All of them were the same color, however, which is not the same on this one. And uh, it had three game modes. It had a level mode where it basically lit up a specific amount of lights and your job was to clear the screen by popping only the specific ones that were lit up and it would progressively get faster and there would be more lights for you to pop on each level and it would kind of randomize how many lights on each screen and stuff like that. The second mode was um, the multiplayer mode where it would randomize a screen of things and every time you someone cleared a screen, it would get faster and more challenging, and you would have to pass it around to people. And the third mode was what I like to call score attack. I don't actually know what it's called. Um, basically, you would always have three lights lit up at a time, but your job was to clear the entire screen every time you... every the, like the entire screen of ten. So all of them, instead of just a, a, a select few. So when you popped a light, another one would turn on. And you basically cleared as many screens of 10 as you possibly could. Um, and the game would track how many you did, and I think somewhere below 30 seconds. So that was Pop It Pro. The only problem is, as a visually impaired person, it's really hard to play. Um, what's actually kind of ironic about this is that 
while the Poppet Pro wasn't meant for accessibility in mind, it does make a couple of noises, like there are actual noises, especially in level and multiplayer modes that tell you which lights lit up, but they happen so ridiculously quickly, there's no way that almost anyone except, well, I know of one person who can, uh, clear screens without seeing the lights light up whatsoever. I would never be able to do that. That's like literally impossible for me. Um, but that was a side effect. It wasn't meant to happen. In contrast, Pop It Go, not only is it smaller, but the game modes have been refined so that they just work better, and uh, two of the three are actually fully playable. Well, okay, no, that's a stretch. One of the three is fully playable, the second out of the three is mostly playable with some luck, and the third one out of the three is a bit more luck-based than I'd like, but it is what it is. If you can't see the lights. Uh, the Poppet Go, which is the thing I'm holding in my hands, differs from the Poppet Pro in a few aspects. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about this. Uh, what makes Poppet, the electronic game versions of Poppet appealing is that the, f uh, the, the little rubber silicone things that you pop in and out, you pop them in, but then in order to actually get the game to recognize that you've cleared a screen and you want them to pop back out, you press this button on the back, which causes them to mechanically pop back up. So you don't actually have to press them from the other side. It'd be kind of cool gimmick, actually, but that's not what you do. You just press this one big button and all of them will return back to the up position, or at least they're supposed to. Um, and that's what is, the, what, what is true in Poppet Go as well as Poppet Pro. And before I forget, I guess I might as well mention Poppet Pro is the second game alongside the flip slide that has gotten ex exceptional amounts of Chinese bootleg clones and other such um, things. There are so many different revisions of Poppet Pro clones you wouldn't even believe. And unfortunately, Poppet Pro clones make up more sales than real Poppet Pros do, which is kind of annoying, uh, especially in, in if you think about how much, you know, the original inventor put in to actually get the game to work as well as it does. Um, the way the game uh, is supposed to detect that you've popped something doesn't have to do with the fact that you're actually popping it. It's more about the fact that when you press it in, uh, you will then, your finger will interact with a capacitive sensor inside the hole, which... Uh, gives the game an input. And that's the thing that some of the... Uh, some of the... Uh, what am I looking for? Some of the bootleg Chinese Poppet Pros do it differently. I'm not actually sure how they're able to do this, but they recognize the input on the pop instead of on the touch of a sensor after the pop. Uh... But that's neither here nor there, because the Poppet Go works the way the original Poppet Pro does, i.e. the touch method. So if you're like really, really unsure, and you've accidentally popped a bubble, but you haven't actually... Um, oh yeah, sometimes I call them bubbles, by the way. If you popped one, but you actually haven't gone far enough to touch it, then it won't count. That's a thing. But this also does mean that if you've popped one and you want to repeatedly press it, which outside of the game you might have to do that, um, then you can do that as well. Whereas with the fake Poppet Pros, the bootleg ones, you have to use buttons outside of the light grid to control most of the game. Which is kind of weird if you think about it. Like, you should be able to control the entire game using... You know, it has 10 bubbles on it. That's way too many inputs just to begin with anyway. Why put in even more buttons 
Like, for example, it has an on button of its own. Why does it have an on button? I don't know. Whereas, on the Poppet Pro and the Poppet Go, simply the act of pressing the back button, uh, the one that pops the bubbles up, uh, that will turn the game on just as it is. And that's the thing that starts the game as well. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, I was just about to explain the modes of the Poppet Go before I went sidetracked. Um, so, let's see. The Poppet Go has three modes, just like the Poppet Pro does, but they're quite different. Let's go through them all, shall we? So, first thing, the Poppet Go is tiny. It is absolutely tiny. I love it. It's, it's like, so cute looking. I don't know why, but I really like how tiny it is. Um, it's about as big as a Simon Micro, if you know what that is like. Maybe even slightly smaller in in uh, diameter. It's almost a circle with the speaker coming off on one side and kind of like a hook type thing on the other side. You might be able to actually use this as an absolutely huge keychain or something. It's a little bit not, it's, it's like not really practical, but it's a thing. And the entire back part sticks out because you can press it in. And it has five bubbles on the top arranged in a in a corner slash center fashion, sort of like the number five on a dice would be, and you you pop them, and you press the button. And you can press this button mechanically without actually pressing the digital... Hey there, I didn't ask you to turn on. What was that? Uh, you are supposed to be able to press the mechanical part before pressing the micro-switched part in the, uh, like, to actually get the game to turn on, but mine just turned on anyway. As you can hear, if you don't do anything after about 10 seconds, it immediately turns off, which is cool. Um, so, yeah, five bubbles this time, and they have lights in them that are apparently full RGB, which will come in pretty soon. I didn't do that. What... How, did it, how does it know? Anyway, there are three modes. To switch between them, you press the appropriate bubble. So the middle button, uh, the middle bubble, is game one. The bottom left, and this is, by the way, if you have the speaker facing exactly towards you, the bottom left is game two, and the bottom right is game three. And they all have different noises. And some of these noises are the same as the Poppet Pro, by the way. Uh, another thing that's kind of important before I go on is that the battery compartment is inside the back part, uh, which I, I hope that it's uh, not going to be that much of a problem, because the Poppet Pro, the original one, has had issues of it resetting itself if you press the back too hard, because there were you know, the battery contacts and things were inside there, so pressing the back would cause the things to move, and yeah. Uh, this one in particular takes two AAAs. I'm not sure if the Puppet Pro takes more or less. <clears throat> anyway, so let's go over the games. Uh, I'm going to start, as weird as it is, with game two and three, and then go back to game one after that. Game two is the most blind accessible one, Oh yeah, before I go on, another thing. Uh, there are actually functions embedded into the other two bubbles as well. So, bottom left, bottom right is game two and three. Uh, the middle bu bubble is game one. And then the top right bubble changes volume. There are three different volume settings. And the volume that is on the quietest setting is really quiet, which I like a lot. It's not mute. The fake Poppet Pros have a mute option. This, these, the normal ones, have a very quiet option. And the top left is, is check high score, which I'm not going to do just yet. Okay, so, uh, sometimes you'll hear me re-trigger the thing so it doesn't turn off. So, game two is what I'll start with. This is the so-called memory game. The way this one works is it lights all five bubbles up in a specific order, and your job is to remember that order 
and hit them exactly in that order. And as you'll very quickly be able to tell, this game is fully blind accessible because every single bubble has a pitch. Um, so I, it's going to be quite difficult for me to do this, but I'm going to attempt in the first few screens to, uh, to give you the exact bubbles I am pressing down as I do it. So let's press the back and let's begin. That was absolutely amazing. It... Okay, let me explain. So it went... It played like five different tones, and they were exactly in the correct order from ascending lowest to highest. So, uh, so it went uh, top left, top right, middle, bottom left, bottom right. That's how they go in pitch order. And by the way, you can hold the button down the back button to pause for literally ever. It doesn't care. See if I let go. Top right, middle, bottom left, bo uh, no wait, I confused it. It was bottom right, middle, top left, and then top right, bottom left. And sometimes you hear these uh, boing noises. That means there's a red light on one of the bubbles that popped up for a little minute and you should just ignore it. Just forget it exists. After three screens, you'll level up. The music and the then the pitch gets faster, and there's more red lights. There we go. It's in ascending order again. Top left, top right, middle, bottom left, bottom right, and as you can hear, I don't know if you can hear. I just pressed the wrong one. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you if I do this. If I do nothing, yeah, there, uh, that is how much time you have per sequence. So you have a very small amount of time to hit all five of them, and you'll see what I mean by very small once we get far enough. Uh, every, every level has three screens that you have to clear. Oh, don't turn off on me. Uh, and when you clear the three screens, you level up, and there's ten levels in total. Okay, th this is... I just, I just now realized... This is a lot harder to explain the pitches than I thought. Like, I know what the pitches are, but trying to explain to you exactly what they are, I wouldn't be able to. By the way, you can wait here before pressing the back button. It's not going to make too much more of a noise, though. See, there were two red lights in the beginning there. The, the appeal of the red lights, for those who uh, actually uh, hasn't seen one of these in real life and who actually has enough sight to see the lights, is that the red lights appear, I believe, on random bubbles, so you're supposed to, and, and the other ones that pop up that are normal are not that color, so basically you're supposed to just forget they ever popped up on anything. That's the point of them. And of course they can appear almost anywhere. I'm not really focused today, am I? So, uh, the scoring system on this, on this game only gives you how many levels you completed. The amount of dings is how many levels you've completed. Unlike in uh, all the other two games, which I'll get to eventually.
bottom left, bottom right, middle, top left. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't tell you what I'm pressing. Sorry, it's really difficult. It's really, really ironic that the very first sequence I got when I started playing was the exact, like, the correct order from bottom to top. Uh, well, lowest to highest, because it starts on the top, but anyway. As you can tell... Oh! Oh, it's the same sequence that I was talking about, except the bottom ones are flipped around. Oh, and this is the only one of the three, I believe, the only one of the three games that if you accidentally pop or put your finger inside a bubble hole that you've already popped, it will still count as a fail. There it, there it is again, top left, top right, middle, bottom left, bottom right. Wait, what? How did I miss that? I popped the correct one. It was the only one possible. That was weird. That must have been some sort of weird touch sensor issue. That was just my stupidity. I was going way too fast. Let me show you. You can go fast on this if you want. Yeah, but why do that if you're risking, if you're risking your, you know, actually making it through? So for right now, the sensors are pretty responsive, as you might notice. And the reason why I'm mentioning, in, mentioning this is because at some point while you're playing this, you'll hear that uh, it's going to change slightly. If I get far enough. It's already having a little bit of problems keeping up. That's three lights three red lights. And thankfully they were at the very beginning of the sequence, so I just ignored all of them, but sometimes they're not at the beginning, so they might confuse you. And when there's three lights, that's just giving more time, or taking more time away from you, from you being able to complete the sequence fast enough. From here on out, the game is having trouble correctly, uh, doing everything fast, as fast as it can. It's having trouble keeping up. As you can hear, when I pop something, it takes a while to actually do anything. That time I actually had to force my finger to go inside two 
of the bubble holes, you heard me kind of hesitate there. That was not me. The game just didn't register my pop, so I had to go in and touch it with my finger. Uh, two of the five, uh, to the last two actually did that, which is really, really difficult sometimes, because uh, it, it's either that it touches, sometimes it touches the same bubble twice, or it just doesn't touch the correct one at the right time. We're not done yet. I had to do it again. Whoa. There we go! So that's what happens when you complete the second game. It plays a victory jingle and then gives you a score in 10. Uh, that's as much as it can give you. And you heard it still made the da da din noise. Uh, the reason why is because even if you get the same score as the maximum score ever, if it isn't any higher than your highest score, then you will never hear the high score jingle. The only time you ever do is if you specifically press the top left button to recall your highest score, which, surprise, surprise, is going to be the exact same. That's ten dings, which is the same as I just got. Uh, so, game two, which is the memory game, is by far the easiest to play on this as a blind person. I can get up to, usually up to like level 8, 9 quite often, uh, and also quite often I will actually make it to the last level and beat it. Not always though, sometimes because of the fact that the game is uh, getting a little bit less responsive, it's harder and harder to keep up. And that one time, I honestly didn't think I was going to get through the last level. I almost failed. I also uh, really like messing with the bubbles just while it's idle. You can't really hear them pop down as much. Um, okay, so now that, I'm, now that I've done game two, let's cover game three real quick. I won't spend too much time on this. Game three is the one where all five lights light up and they keep, they stay on, they stay lit. Um, and uh, one or two of them are of a slightly different color, or a really different color, than the other ones. And you're supposed to hit the ones that are of the normal color, as for what that color is, I'm actually not sure. Uh, and of course, as you can quite, uh, as, as I've talked about, um, this one is not easy to play as a blind person because you have no idea what the correct one is. So they come on the screen. Oh yeah, sometimes mine does this thing where I press the when I press the button, the back button, it just immediately fails for no reason. Ah, it did it again. It's not supposed to do that. Come on. Yeah. So, um, it's very luck-based. Every pop you do gives you one point, and you are timed. You have about, I don't know, like 30 seconds to complete as many screens as you possibly can. And if you ever make a mistake, you just die immediately. And you can just kind of stay here and do nothing as well if you wanted to. In fact, let's count how long it takes. Six, seven, I'm just counting loops of the music. 
8, 9, 10, 11. And by the way, if I touch one that I've already done, nothing happens. Now, you heard a different sound there. That noise means less than 5, and it lights up. Uh, it lights up a number of lights that is not five. So it starts from, I think, the top left, and it counts. Like, if you see three or four lights uh, visually, but it doesn't, it doesn't let you hear the difference. So if I get one, two, three, or four, it's going to make the same sound. If I get five, it makes the other ding noise. And if I get up between five, uh, between six and nine, it's going to make the... the bigger ding and then the smaller ding at this like next to each other let's see if i can do that no oh really i just got five again There's six. Yeah, I just played two of them. It's completely luck-based. The only thing that is set in stone is that the very first light you get is always the correct color. And if you hear that tick noise, that means you got zero. That was my fault. I I pressed the wrong one. I mean, I wouldn't have known which one it was, but I was just hesitating, trying to guess. Nope. I'm going to try a few more times, see if I can get above five, but it's very luck-based, as you can tell. And my game sometimes does this a lot, where it just, like, doesn't even let me play. Really? I think this game is just on to me now. I got six again. Oh well. Um, just as a proof of concept, here's my high score. And no, I didn't cheat this or anything. That's 20. Exactly. And, uh... I have no idea how I got that. Getting above 10 is really, really lucky for me. I mean, as you can tell, I've only gotten 6. Let's just try to get above 6 just once. It's really difficult. Really? I got 6 again. Hey! I got eight, uh, but it was double hard because there were two wrong colors in one of those sequences there. So instead of a 20% chance of hitting the wrong one, I had a 40% chance of hitting the wrong one. Anyway, that's game three. Uh, I don't actually know what to call this game, but it's it would be kind of fun if I could see colors and if I could see lights, but I can't. So it's kind of luck based. It's almost like what what I what I do playing the flip slide. And to the flip slide's credit, I still play that thing even though it's fully luck based for me and literally I'm fighting a never ending and unfair battle against RNG. I don't care, I still play my flip slides sometimes. Anyway, game one, which I think I could pretty much fully call the whack-a-mole game, because uh, that's literally what it's like, um, it's a little bit easier, but it's also kind of luck-based, as you'll see. 
The way this one works, and I'm going to explain before I even turn the thing on, because I'm going to spend quite a lot of time playing this game. It's, uh, it's been one of those things where I've basically been... Sometimes I just sit down f with a Poppet Go in my hand for an entire hour straight just playing this one game. And you'll see why. <laughs> the way this one works is lights start popping up and you're supposed to try to hit them as fast as you possibly can. And the more screens you complete, the faster the lights go. Uh, the faster the lights take to actually pop up on the, on the, the bubbles. And every light you hit gives you a point. And basically the point is to try to get as many screens of as many lights as possible in, I think, 25, 30 seconds. I don't know how many. And um, in this game, and only this game, if you hit a wrong light, it doesn't immediately end the game, thankfully. What it does is it just doesn't give you the point for that specific light. So if you've popped it once, the game knows that it's popped, but it won't give you a point for it, and basically, if you, for example, have popped three of the five bubbles, but two of them are still remaining, the lights that can appear are only on those that you haven't popped on the screen so far. Um, here's what's annoying. The lights make noises, as you heard also in games one and two, uh, game two and three, when they appear, except when you are successfully popping them and you're and you're seeing I think you're supposed to see the lights come on while you do that the game doesn't interrupt the sound which means you don't actually get informed of the lights coming on the screen when that happens which means you are basically forced to play a game of lottery just hitting random bubbles starting off by hitting two or three of the ones that you've heard really quickly in a sequence and then just kind of going off of luck after that, hitting other ones and hoping you get them right before the, uh, before you're and you're basically trying to keep a constant tempo, like keeping it going, so you can go uh, through as many screens as possible. Now, if you go too fast, the lights will actually start going so fast that there's absolutely no way you will ever hit any of them. Because I haven't explained this, I kind of should have, but they disappear. So if you don't hit them fast enough and hit them too late, then nothing happens. Which is annoying because eventually, after I believe exactly 16 screens, if I'm not fully mistaken, or is it 15? Uh, starting from there, you will basically have no way of ever hitting anything, no matter how hard you try. The lights will pop up so fast that you can't hit them. Um, you're not supposed to clear 15 screens, though, without having reached the maximum score. Um, and this is where we get to the part where I get to talk about the fact that I've been able to get the maximum score on this game without having seen any of the lights whatsoever. Now, uh, the fact that I've done this is absolutely crazy to me. I have no idea how I managed to do it, and I've only done it a handful of times, so it's not like I can do it easily. It's really difficult, but I've done it a few times. So, I'm gonna give you a couple of, uh, more than a couple, I'm probably gonna play this for a little while. I'm gonna give you a couple of runs and show you what it's like to play this game when you know fully well what kind of pressure you're under. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you what happens if you just kind of start a game and just let the lights kind of sit there. And if I start hitting things... Yeah, this is the only one that that has the Poppet Pro style, oh, you have to hurry up, press the back button, like right now, sound. That... Well, by the time you hear the... You kind of can't... Actually, yes, you can. Let me show you. I'm gonna press the button... Now. And it still works. I'm going deliberately slow. I'm 
I'm not gonna have enough time to finish. Yeah, see, I didn't even have time to hit them. I got between 35 and 40 in that game. So, basically, just like in game 3, the big dings equal 5, the small dings equal anything between 1 and 4. Um, so, what you need to take away from this is that the lights will pop up in any order, and they get faster, and you have to hit them as quickly as you possibly can. Let me just play it as I normally would, and you'll see how hectic this gets. Oh, another thing, before I forget. Uh, there is a way to stop the game currently in progress, and that's to press the back button when when you uh, still have bubbles left. If you do that, you immediately fail. And also, while the... While that's happening, the timer is completely frozen. So if you want to take a couple seconds of break, you can. You can't take an infinite break like you do in memory mode by holding the button, but you can take a small break, at least, between screens if you want. Oh, come on. Wait a minute. Does the timer not reset when I... Let me just... Let me just count five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so about fifteen seconds. Let me just... Three, four, five. I'm going to press the button exactly at 14 and see if I can... 10, 11, 12, 13. And then wait. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it does reset. It just resets. It just so... I was talking so much that I never didn't realize how quickly or how quickly time was going. Okay, let's go. That's the most common score I get, is between 45 and 50. Uh, 45 and, well, 46 and 49, to be specific. That's the most common score I almost always get, and if I, if I get that, I know I'm sort of on the right track. I just need to do slightly better. As you can guess, 10 dings, which means 50 points, is the maximum score on this game. Getting a screen with only th two or three of the lights is not ideal, but sometimes you just can't do anything about it. I just went a bit too fast there. I got to screen 16, which is the one where you literally cannot hit anything. And I got between 46 and 49 again. Hey, I just completed a screen correctly. But in return, I got another screen of just two lights. As you can hear, it picks up really quickly. And I spent so much time trying to explain and slowing down that I couldn't complete the amount of screens I needed to get the right amount of points. Oh well. But as you can hear, between 46 and 49 is a ridiculously common score for me to get.
sometimes you just hit all five of them at the same time, and it's gonna work. That was not a very good run. Not as good as the other ones were. Doesn't matter, I got between 46 and 49 anyway. No. That last screen you heard it go didn't. That's because the lights, the, the same light showed up like twice. I got between 41 and 44 that time. It was that bad. That's what I was talking about when I said the lights are so fast that you literally cannot hit them no matter how hard you try. Sometimes you can hit one. No, I'm having no luck. Still got between 46 and 49 though, which is pretty surprising. Oh, I must have been a little bit too slow, because I could only complete, like, 14 screens. No, I, I only completed, like, 13 and a half screens, or something like that, so... I must have just waited a bit longer. No! Yeah, I either go too fast and I get to screen 16 without getting the, the amount of points I need, that time it wasn't even 45, or I go too slow and I can't, go, I can't get there fast enough. Hey! There it is! It only took me a few tries. I got it. I finally got it, again! Let's go! So there it is, I got 50. And that last screen of getting all five of them correct was the boost I really, really needed. I don't think I would have been able to do it if it wasn't for that stroke of luck I had right there. Also, there was another screen of, of like fully five that I was able to complete earlier, somewhere before then. Wow, I got it again! Let's go! 
I was going to eventually splice in a recording of me doing it. I actually have another one on camera, but I didn't have to. I got 50 officially in the main recording. Let's go! Getting 50 on this, just the fact that I'm even able to do it is crazy, but also the fact that I got it enough time, like, it doesn't feel... Okay, here's one thing I will say. It is still ridiculously luck-based, so like, when I get 50, I do celebrate it a bit. But also, I'm the kind of person who celebrates wins against RNG just randomly anyway, because I'm weird. Like, if you really think about it logically, um, the fact that you're constantly battling against unfair RNG and this one time it lets you through and you and you win, I mean, is that really something to be celebrated? I don't know. But to be quite honest, for my ways of doing things, I personally don't care. I... I... I like the fact that I've done it, you know? I mean, the first time I've done it, I couldn't even believe that happened. Um, and since then, every time, I just... It, it does feel kind of a little bit hollow sometimes, if you think about it, but it's it's fun. Like, I personally find playing this game still really, really fun, even if quite a lot of it for me is luck-based. Now, if I had the Poppet Pro, that wouldn't be the case, because all three of the games would be pretty much luck-based, and I would get almost nowhere whatsoever. And also, let's not talk about the fact that that game doesn't even save high scores for anything that is in score attack mode, and to get a high score on score attack, you don't, you shouldn't ever hit any, any wrong lights whatsoever. So basically, you just kind of, uh, you have to hit as many correct lights as you possibly can, but if you accidentally hit the wrong one by mistake, your score becomes zero. It doesn't save whatsoever. In, uh, in contrast with this game, which even if you do make a mistake, it does save your score. I would hate to ha I would hate to see game three, for example, on this thing not give you a score if you didn't out outlast it. Oh well. Yeah, I got fifty on game one on camera without having to splice in the recording. Let's go. I'm still messing with this, by the way. It's just a f just as an effective uh, just effective uh, just as effective. Sorry as a fidget toy as it is a game. Oh, don't do that to me. Let me just try my luck on game three a couple more times. kidding. but I was really close to it. I think I got like eight or nine. It's completely random. Well, completely random, except for the fact that the very first one isn't ever wrong. Like, the very first color of the five that it does. Everything else, you just kind of have to guess. So, 
Pop It Go, one of the most solid and one of my favorite games of recent past. Uh, I am really happy I have one of these things. The one thing that I really wish is that these things were available outside the US and I didn't have to wait for someone to send me a package containing one because I would have bought one earlier if they were available in, in the UK or in Europe pretty much anywhere. And that's the weakness, I think, that the Chinese are exploiting, because they can put the fake Poppet Pros everywhere. They're flooding Europe at the moment, and I think parts of the US as well. Uh, not to mention their homeland, Asia, which probably also gets them a lot. Um, so that's the only thing that I wish the Poppet Go was better at, is advertised and sold in other countries aside from the US, but why does it do that? I don't know how this thing decides to turn on on me when all I'm doing is popping bubbles. I don't understand. Wait, if you, if you press all five of them in a specific order or something, does it turn on? No. Wait, what? I don't understand. There's supposed to be micro switches inside there. How? I don't understand. Anyway. I don't really have much else to say, other than the fact that I feel really happy of the, being able to show you pretty much everything I could about the Pop It Go, and how fun it is. And also how much of a maniac I am for playing game one as much as I have been. With that, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and uh, I hope to see you in a couple of other electronic game purchase collection. Not purchase collection, what am I talking about? Electronic game, just videos in general. I, now that I said purchase collection, you might be thinking I might be buying stuff. To be quite honest, I don't really know if I'll go back to buying stuff anymore. There's way too many games I already have. There's only a couple that I can get now that are different from the ones I already own. And after that, what am I going to buy? I don't really know. I'm starting to run out of things. Um, we'll see. And not to mention the fact that I have no... I, I, I have no... Well, I don't have enough is what I should say. I don't have enough time to devote to doing all this stuff anymore as I used to. But anyway, that was that. Pop It Go, really fun game. At least I personally find it really fun. Um, and uh, I hope that I'll be able to make another electronic game video, just a general one, in the coming week or so. So until then, I'll see you guys Later.